starting value of 10. The officials will be looking for execution. Hello everyone, welcome into M&T Bank Arena for today's acrobatics and tumbling meet with the Quinnipiac University Bobcats and the Augustana University Vikings. I'm Emma Carmen, joined by alumni Stephanie Kalella and Jordan Sack. Ladies, how are we doing this afternoon? We're doing good, I'm excited for this matchup today. Very excited to be here. It's a beautiful day in Hamden, Connecticut, and we definitely have a lot of energy out here with the crowd and with these two teams. So excited to see what they are going to put out here on the mat today. So we're going to start here with the compulsory event. As we can see, Augustana will be first competing in each round here, and then the Quinnipiac University Bobcats will be right after them. We'll get into this, but it's really apples to apples. Both teams are performing exact same skills, seeing who can do it better. So we have several heats in the compulsory round. This is Augustana up taking the mat in the first heat. And essentially, they're again, they're gonna be competing the same skills, each with a starting value that's gonna be 10, and then our deductions are gonna come in based on how these skills are executed. So what we're looking at here is the positioning of the tops. We did see a little bit bobble there, but solid catches. Overall, really good performance from Augustana. I think the judges are really gonna like how they were in sync. I think they really look for those bobbles, like you mentioned. I think they're also really focused on the tightness of the tops and their positioning when they're in there, especially in those straddle sets. We'll look back on the replay here. So really looking for that timing, as Jordan mentioned. Nice, oh. tight, solid landings and just making sure everything is really in sync and on time because you can lose kind of anywhere with deductions between a tenth up to three tenths on certain things. So really important to look for timing, strong holds. They are going to be looking for those three second holds as you're talking about, Carmen. They're, uh, Emma, they're going to be basically, we're looking at the tops holding there for three seconds. And what we're also going to be looking at is that those skills at the top are executed at top height. So those dismounts that you're looking for, we want, we want to make sure that those tops are executing those skills with height. Yes, and for those bases that are underneath the tops, they're really looking to make sure that they're not moving at all. No steps and you get deductions for those. And they're really looking to see the stability of them. For each of these compulsory, compulsory rounds as well, so everything is out of 10 points. So the possible that you can get in this event is 40. So there'll be four different heats within this one event and each heat is worth 10 possible points. So now we're gonna see Quinnipiac take the mat in just a second. They're gonna do again the exact same skills that Augustana had put out there. And for everybody watching from home, for those people who have never necessarily been to an acrobatics and tumbling meet, there are three officials and they all do sit at the front of the mat and they each look for something different and they all come together after that and they put all the scores together depending on what they all saw. And as Jordan mentioned there, so there's tops, there's bases, and those officials, they do officiate by position. So there's a head official who's responsible for the big management and oversighting everything, and then we run into those execution officials where one judges the tops and one judges the bases. So we have Quinnipiac up in the first heat of the compulsory event. Again, you'll see that hold, and you'll look at that skill being executed at top height. Another thing we're looking at here is essentially creating mirror images with these two groups. Definitely a lot of energy out there, as I said, between both of these teams and certainly in the audience. It is an alumni event today, so we have a lot of alumni coming from all over just to be part of uh, the second meet of the season. Great way to start the meet, too, with the 
acro uh, heat of the compulsory. It's always just fun to see the energy these teams are putting out there. Absolutely, and you can kind of see, you know, Acro's the first event night that goes out there. Everybody's got a little nerves before they start the meet, but you can see all the smiles on both teams' faces right now, just ready to go and get this going. I think we should talk a little bit about what the compulsory event even consists of. So these are skills that are basically the, the bread and butter, the kind of building tools for this sport. Uh, and they are decided every three years. There's actually a committee that votes on what skills are going to be involved in the compulsory event. So because this sport is evolving and growing and the skills of these athletes continues to grow, these, uh, this actual event is continuing to change uh, every three years as well. And it does focus a lot on safety. So again, these are kind of your building blocks for the sport. So it teaches these athletes what they need to know to advance their skills moving forward. And going into what Steph was talking about, so what we'll see next after Compulsory Acro just finished up is Compulsory Pyramid. And this has really evolved over the past couple of years for sure, I think. Back when the f sport first started, it was definitely a little different than what it was five years ago. And now it's really changed. So. You'll just see the involvement of the sport, whether it's certain people, you know, learning different positions, learning everything like that. But I think that this evolution of the sport has just been amazing, even from our time of Next being at Quinnipiac. So pyramid. it's very interesting to see. First up at the compulsory pyramid, he will be Augustana. Now the Vikings will take the mat for compulsory pyramid, as I was just talking about. I think it's also really incredible to see that even when all three of us were on the team and competing, this was not the same thing that I competed, not the same thing that you guys competed also. So I just love to see where the sport is going. Yeah, that's a very good point. It just shows you the evolution of the sport. Officials looking for very similar things, timing, strongholds, nice tight catches on this. Really nice hold there at the top. You can show the, you can see the strength here that these athletes are demonstrating. And I think the judges are really also looking for, you'll see that top with um, their straddle sits. They're looking for a full extension and they're looking to see that their legs are essentially higher than their hips. And that's something that the judges really do really focus on. And I think um, they're gonna be very happy with that. And that just takes it so much power, so much stability. So although that skill, they're, they're demonstrating it like it's effortless, but it does require a significant amount of strength, not only for those bases below, but the top. Great timing there from the Vikings. And nice solid catches. You can get deductions if the catches are too low or too high. So you want them kind of perfectly caught there, which I do think Augustana did a great job. As we were mentioning before, the evolution of the sport, I think it's also really important to key in that all these athletes come from different backgrounds. Not everybody comes from a gymnastics or a cheerleading background. We have some power tumblers, you have some divers, you have people that come from competitive trampoline. I think it's really awesome to see how everybody can kind of come together and make it one sport. They all be on the same map performing those. Yeah, it's quite amazing to see where everyone's coming from and how everyone kind of has a different pathway to get here. But bringing it all together nonetheless. So again, now we're still in the second heat of the compulsory event, and this is Quinnipiac taking the mat, uh, performing again the same skills in the pyramid heat. Three, two, so again, looking at that extension of the legs, Lots of excitement, a fist pump from Coach Marianne Powers there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, the team seemed absolutely pumped about that. Yeah, very exciting. So this is Coach Powers' 26th season as head coach of the Quinnipiac Bobcats. So she is just, she's just been a, a rock star out there uh, for this sport. She's really just been a strong leader. 26 years, I can't believe that. And she does have a background in not only acrobatics and tumbling, but she was a coach at different levels um, in Pop Warner, All-Star Level 6, and obviously at the university level. So she does have a, a very strong background. She has a good track record, too, when it comes to this program. I know she's 
coached 15 All-Americans, three members of the All-Academic Team, newcomers of the year, and Academic Achievement Award winners. So Quinnipiac has really been well-rounded when it comes to both athletically and academically, which I think is a great kind of platform Our to have and run with. The compulsory event is the toss. First up in the compulsory toss will be Augustana. Augustana will now take the mat for the compulsory toss. So two groups here looking for that same synchronization. The key thing to look at here will be how high the bases can throw the top here and how tight those catches are. We also want to make sure that the top, again, is hitting that skill at the fullest height. So you want to make sure that the top is not uh, basically executing the skill right off of the basket, uh, or the toss, rather, but that they're hitting that skill right at the top. The officials are also looking for when that top does come through that the bases and no one are moving. You know, they're not jerking up and down. They're not moving side to side. They want to make sure that they are fully, completely stable and not moving at all. Let's see this replay right here. I do think they had great height, great timing. That's another thing. Again, you want to you create those mirror images, and that's certainly difficult to do when you have two different, two different tops flying in the air. So. As we can see here, too, on the broadcast, that's head coach for Augustana, Kaylin Cowan. This is the team's first season actually competing. Kaylin has a great background, though. Just like Marianne, she comes from Baylor University. She was an assistant coach there for a year. She won three national championships as a student athlete for the Bears. She earned a pair of All-American accolades. And then she actually, when she graduated, started a couple programs. She um, was a head coach down at Limestone University in South Carolina. She was an assistant coach at West Virginia Wesleyan, went back to Baylor to be an assistant for a year, and has now started this wonderful program at Augustana. So you can certainly see the passion she has for this sport, that's for sure. And Augustana did claim their first victory uh, of their, their career on uh, February 19th, and that was down in Wisconsin, uh, Concordia, Wisconsin. So now Quinnipiac will be taking the mat, and this is still in the compulsory event. This will be the, the toss, event, uh, toss heat for Quinnipiac. And again, we'll be seeing the same tosses that Augustana had just put out there. Really incredible height there. Absolutely. They seem to be very happy with that. We'll watch the replay here. So everything from the load in all the way to the finish is to counts. As you can see in the background, nice tight catches there. Also in that replay, you can see those tops fully extending after that tuck and making sure that their chests are up. That's also a key position that the officials are looking for, and I do know that that is something that those girls did very well. And once they come out of that tuck, they're fully extending, essentially in a straight line. And then they're making sure that they're not lifting their legs up or piking as they come into that, into their bases. Next up for the compulsory will be tumbling. So this will incorporate eight different athletes on the mat performing different basic kind of apples to apples skills here of what they're going to show later on in the actual tumbling event. But as Steph mentioned, you know, this is where they're learning those basics. It's all about timing. You're going to see um, Augustana start this off with just those simple skills, but eight athletes on the mat trying to time everything as well as they can and really stick and hold. So not only are we looking at timing here, but we're looking at how they land the skill. And that there's no step outs there, which I think we saw one there. Nice landings there. Very nice timing there from Augustana. 
Also, for people who have never necessarily been to an acrobatics and tumbling meet, the skills that you kind of just saw there were a back tuck, a straddle jump or a toe touch to tuck, a back handspring back tuck, and a round off back handspring layout. Really solid performance from Augustana out there. And as we mentioned, Augustana, they are one and one on the season so far. They've had two meets where Quinnipiac has just had one. So they played Oregon for their first meet ever, first meet of the season, first meet that they've ever had. And then they defeated Concordia um, not too long ago, February 19th, about two weeks ago or so. So um, lots of traveling. They are from South Dakota. So they made the trek across the country here wow. yesterday morning, had a practice last night. And I think they're super excited to kind of be able to travel all across the country and experience their first year. Yeah, really amazing, too, that they, you know, their first meet was against Oregon, which is one of those founding teams. So Oregon's been doing this since 2009, uh, been part of this sport. So w a great way to start their season. And, I mean, having a victory already is just really impressive. So props to Augustana, and we're happy to have you guys here today at Quinnipiac, that's for sure. I think it's really awesome, too. The team gets to bond so much when they travel. You know, they like build these relationships, which essentially come right back out on the mat. You see how everyone is smiling; they're having a good time, and they are just enjoying themselves. And that comes to a lot with those with practices. You know, really getting to know each other and almost spending every waking moment together between classes, practice, sitting in the library, eating, and you can really see that relay that onto the mat when you see these girls out there. Yeah, and it's so important to have that trust and that friendship and camaraderie, and this sport certainly creates that. This will be our last heat in the compulsory event, and Quinnipiac is on the mat for the tumbling. Really great timing there, some hops. Very nice job from both teams out here today. Both teams are really starting this, this meet off strong. I think they had very good compulsory like events, even right from the acro to the, the, the pyramids to the tosses to tumbling. I thought both teams really came out there, gave it their all, and looks Each wonderful. And before we give you guys all the scores, just want to remind you, every single heat in that round is out of 10 points. So as we get later on into the meet, there'll be a little bit different creativity when it comes to start values, but both teams there, every heat is out of 10 points, and the total will be out of 40. In addition, each position must be held for three seconds. This event demonstrates power, strength, and balance. We're hopefully going to be getting those scores up, up to you guys soon. And then we'll be moving into the next event, which will be Acro. And as Emma had mentioned, again, these are going to have different starting values. They may be a 10, but they don't have to be. The teams do have to select and submit what skills they're going to be putting out there. And if they're not actually completing the skills that they had selected, those are going to be definitely uh, deductions there. So. And just to give a little bit background on this next event, the Acro event. So this is where all the creativity and the strengths of your team are really shown. So there'll be a five element, a six element, and a seven element heat. So which e with each of those, there's 10 possible points. There'll be different start values for certain teams. But they have a 45 second time limit where they're going to go out on that mat and they're going to perform the exact amount of elements that I mentioned, five, six, or seven, but you're going to see a lot of different things shown, whether it's a different thing the top or the base is doing, but this is really where you will see teams just create their own sequences to just meet these individual heat requirements. So it's very interesting, this next event. Super exciting to watch each team see what they come up with. I think the Acro event really attributes to the, like, the strength and the skill of each player that goes out there necessarily they might have a lot of different skills that they can put out of but they always go to their best one and the one that they feel most confident in and i think that really attributes to what we're going to see 
Certainly, and as you mentioned, Emma, it also like this is the, where the creativity comes in. So you'll see each team kind of has their own different style with things, and it is nice to see that. So as we mentioned, we have three officials, and they'll be working on those scores. Any deductions that need to be taken into uh, effect will be affecting these scores. And again, we have one head official and then the two officials that will be looking, one dedicated to the top and one dedicated to the bases. And most of these NCATA officials, they have really come from either the sport of being an athlete within acrobatics and tumbling, or they're a judge in gymnastics or cheerleading. And then Before they're trained annually acro, to come and do all these meets, and they fly from all over. In the compulsory acro heat, Augustana receives an 8.1. Quinnipiac receives a 9.0. We'll get you in these the scores in just a second when we go through them. Augustana receives a 9.5. Quinnipiac receives a 9.8. In the compulsory toss heat, Augustana receives an 8.3. Quinnipiac receives a 9.9. And in the compulsory tumbling heat, Augustana receives a 7.0, Quinnipiac receives an 8.45. Our overall meet standings at this point, after the compulsory event, Augustana receives a 32.9, and Quinnipiac receives a 37.15. So as we go here and look through the scores, we'll start now, with compulsory acro, event. Augustana with an 8.1, Quinnipiac University with a 9.0. Augustana in Compulsory Pyramid, 9.5. Quinnipiac, 9.8. Compulsory uh, Toss, Augustana, 8.3. Quinnipiac, 9.9. Compulsory Tumbling, Augustana, 7.0. Quinnipiac University, 8.45. For those totals of a 32.9 for Augustana and a 37.15 for Quinnipiac as we head into Acro 5. Yeah, so this Acro 5... Um, Heat for Augustana, you're going to see number 16, Kay Green, number 27, Natalie Homerding, number 14, Anne Marie Gonzalez, number 35, Braylon Juve, and number 24, Kara Sanchez. As I mentioned, that creativity there. Augustana seems very happy with that round. So as I mentioned there, the overall difficulty is just coming from the sequences that they're doing, the skills that they're doing. They can get bonuses there. And for Augustana, that started at a 10.0. And then with what the judges are really looking for is you know, strong body positions of the tops, stability from the bases, as we can see that clock in the background there. 45 second time limit, so they're trying to stay within that. Overall, really good performance in that acro heat. You're going to see Quinnipiac take the mat in just a bit. And for Quinnipiac, you're going to have number 19, Stephanie Pereira. Number 4, Mia Rose King. Number 30, Abby Hamilton. Number 38, Chloe White. And number 48, Bella Pierce. And what you'll notice with these groups is there can be a different number of athletes out there. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the four athletes that you can have with that counter. There can be two athletes, there can be three, really just depends on the strength and the exact round that each of these athletes are in. As we mentioned before, these athletes are coming from all different areas, all different sports, some cheerleading, some gymnastics, some divers, we even have some pole vaulters. With that being said, for any of you listeners who are interested in this sport, the recruitment process typically starts in the junior year, the summer of junior year for these athletes. Uh, and you know, they, if they're interested in the sport, sometimes they're reaching out to the coaches, submitting uh, videos, their skills, uh, but it is a process that is in place to make sure that these athletes are given these tremendous opportunities. 
It's just amazing how much, as we mentioned, the sport has grown too. Started out with just a couple teams, now we're up to 51 teams. Wow. Super exciting. In August of 2020 is when the sport was officially given that NCAA emerging sport status. So for anyone listening who's interested, be sure to reach out to head coaches, assistant coaches, if this is something of interest for you. And also go out, uh, go check the NCATA website. They give so much information out there, either whether you want to become a coach, an athlete, an official. Yeah, certainly so many opportunities out there. So Quinnipiac also has a starting value here of a 10. And you can see here how they're actually switching the tops. As you can see that counter on the left, making sure they hit that three second. Three second hold there. And I believe this counts as a second skill, so this will be another hold. Really incredible body position there, incredible strength, great stability. Lots of excitement there from the Quinnipiac sideline. You know, we didn't really talk about this yet, but obviously we're talking about the strength of these athletes. The, but I think mentioning the flexibility after watching that skill is certainly important. Um, that takes just tremendous flexibility. So that was amazing to see. And I think a great thing to notice too is that these acro elements can end when they're in the air. So when Mia Rose King here planches over, she's actually ending within that element. So they hit their fifth element there, so then she can just dismount right off, which is super important to notice as we go through each of the rounds. Big smiles there, lots of excitement from the Bobcats. Also with those handstand positions, each team has the own create their own creativity to kind of figure out what they do. If they want to leave their legs a little bit open, if they want to do them completely closed, or if they want to do a secondary position like you saw Mia Rose King do up there. And as Steph mentioned, there is that committee that does exist called the scoring committee, and they'll kind of go through each of those things before the season starts. So if there's a certain skill or element that maybe your team has a strength, you can submit all of those to the scoring committee, and then they'll go through and they'll give them a certain value. They'll tell you what start value it's going to start at, but you do that all before the season starts. So when they come back together, you can see if those skills have been approved or not, and then that's how you're able to do each of those, and that's where you really truly see how much the sport has evolved. And in between these events and heats, you'll see the teams are still, they're practicing, they're warming up, the coaches are getting involved in their athletes, kind of guiding them through different things, talking them through different skills. The There's really no downtime for these athletes. It is fast paced, there's a lot going on. We're moving right along here. Augustana will start us off for the acro six element heat. Yes, and for Augustana, you're gonna see number four, Johanna Dezella, number 12, Paige Simon, number 29, McKenna Trowbridge, number 32, Maggie Zerlong, Number two, Alana Mackhack. Number 22, Mabel Hager. Number 24, Kara Sanchez. Number 48, Kylie Curse. And number three, Adriana Ware. And their starting value here is a Certainly nicely executed at the top there. There's a little bobble there that you might have saw in one of the tops. Good fight on that right-hand side group. S certainly. So talking about the fight there. So at that point, sometimes it is hard to kind of catch yourself and save that skill. But she certainly did it to make sure that the skill was uh, executed and, and completed. Might have a, s a slight deduction there, again, from the bobble, but did not hit the ground, which is a major save. Yes, and also if an athlete does hit the ground, it is a bigger deduction than it would be and necessarily if they just bobble a little bit, if they sway their legs a little bit. So that deduction would be much greater if she would have hit in the floor. So props to them. And as you can see in this acro six, so a little similar to compulsory acro, which we were talking about in the beginning, kind of that basic model. So 
The officials are looking for everything with timing there, base structure, stability holds, things like that. And I think Acro 6 is a perfect example of how the sport has evolved. So when we all were within Acro, there was just one group out there like Acro 5, but it has now evolved to two groups doing the exact same thing, all based on synchronization. So yeah. here we have up on the screen, Kaylin Cowan, who is actually a former acrobatics and tumbling athlete from Baylor. She herself was a fabulous athlete. She was so, her skills were so versatile. She was able to do so many different positions and so many different skills on that mat. And I remember personally competing against her and watching her and just being in awe of how great she was. Yeah, I certainly remember watching her, that's for sure. And she was an amazing athlete. She's really been just dedicated to the sport, as you guys can see. It does go to show, too, she, 24 student athletes for their first year. That's just an amazing recruitment that she's done within South Dakota. So. Big props to her. So Quinnipiac has a starting value here of a 10. Really great extension by those bases here. And you can see that that is one base holding one top in each of those groups. There was a toss. A fall there on that left group. Another difficult part when that does happen is just picking yourself up and moving forward, which that is exactly what these athletes are doing right now. All about finishing nice and strong. Because every skill counts. Right. So this will be the last heat of the acro event and Augustana will be taking the mat in just a sec. And their starting value here will be also a 10. And again, that is the maximum that you can get. As you just saw in that replay, number two, Tiffany Ziba. The j officials are really looking at specifically for the top to see how much height she's getting and to make sure that her body is twisting the same way and landing with her feet straight in front. Yeah, so we're looking at the body positions right now of those tops, making sure that their legs are fully extended at the top, toes are pointed. Lots of blue, yellow, blue and gold out there today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going, going back to Kaylin Cowan, too, um, as we were mentioning there before we saw Quinnipiac take the mat, she has an assistant coach, Sophia Gardner, who is a grad assistant actually with her. So as we mentioned, going to that NCATA website, there's grad assistant positions, there's volunteer coach, part-time, full-time, head coaching positions. So Sophia is a graduate of actually Azusa Pacific University, and she is pursuing a Master's of Sports Administration um, at Augustana, and she is living in South Dakota while able to be Kaylin's grad assistant, which is just an amazing opportunity for her to get her Master's and also be able to coach alongside Kaylin. And in just a moment, we're gonna see Augustana take the mat for that last heat in the acro. Now, just talking about opportunities that this sport offers to women out there, Quinnipiac does have nine first-year student-athletes. Uh, I believe they have 12 sophomores, 12 juniors, and uh, seven seniors and one graduate student. This event will be the seven element. So continuing the sport, event, even moving into graduate entry, school. Number two, Alana Mahach. Number 29, McKenna Trowbridge. Number three, Adriana You're going to see out in the mat number two, Alana Mahach. Number 29, McKenna Trowbridge. Number three, Adriana Ware, and number 11, Nora Schumacher. And we're back to that one group as we can see. Again, we're looking at one base holding one top there. There was a twist on that dismount, which certainly increases the difficulty there. And there was a, also a flip there going off of the dismount. And again, here we're looking at that full extension of those legs, essentially touching the ceiling. 
Great work out there by those ladies. I think also something to note too is with the five element, the six element, the seven element, you only have a certain amount of time to perform all the elements and it's the same amount of time for each of them. So even when you're adding an element, the time does not change. You still only have 45 seconds. So I think that also adds a little bit of difficulty for those ladies out there. Definitely important to mention. And you know, if there is a bobble or a fall that happens in any of these skills, again, they still only have 45 seconds and need to make sure that they're executing the, the entire sequence there. There will be also more or larger deductions if they don't finish and execute the skills that were submitted. And if you do go over that 45 seconds, that is also a deduction. It goes to show you how these coaches have to be so aware and so trained into what they're putting out there and what they're uh, submitting for their athletes. They need to know the athletes in and out, know that know their skills, and you know it's it ta it's a skill in itself just to make sure you're planning appropriately for these teams. And I think for Augustana, we went kind of into Quinnipiac University's roster. They have two juniors, three sophomores, and 19 freshmen. So as Steph talks about knowing your athletes, I mean, they come in freshman year, they're learning this sport brand new. So for Kaylin to have every single heat and have athletes that can go out there and perform fully in every single round is just beyond impressive from her recruiting aspect. And it just goes to show how many athletes are really interested within the sport? 19 out of their 24 right there are all freshmen. Really props to Augustana there too, because coming to college is a completely different lifestyle. It's absolutely a change, but then to come in and to have all those girls being freshmen and training them to be ready for this competition yeah, season is really props to those athletes Quinnipiac and Coach Allen. Absolutely. So for Quinnipiac here, you're gonna see number five, Catherine Carter, number four, Mia Rose King, number 38, Chloe White, number four to six, Skylar Toomey, and number two, Tiffany Ziba. Really nice landing there. Reposition on that straddle set. Again, we're looking at those solid three second holds. And there'll be another hold here. So, talking about those holds, you know, it, hitting the skill is difficult. But then this holding it for three seconds and holding that body position with such strength is, is pretty fascinating and amazing to see. And as you can see there, there can be a crossover of athletes within the acro heats. So as you see, Mia Rose King, number four there, she comes in and she actually is in the acro five element and in the acro seven element. So you can have an athlete crossover into two Heat you just are not version. able to have them in all heat three one, acro heat heats. And heat three is an open heat. Two key things the officials will And you also saw for. Mia Rose there. The she the went into that handstand from a straddle sit, which also hires the difficulty of that skill and is very difficult. So great work out there by the Bobcats. Another thing's these another thing that these coaches really need to know is the score like basically analyzing the score sheet. So uh, as we talked about so far, we do have the just the compulsory score so far, Quinnipiac with 37.150, and then Augustana with 32.9 total. So, you know, still pretty close here. I will say, looking back at the last meet that Augustana had, I can give you their score for the compulsory. They were at 36.550 uh, in the compulsory event. And then I can see if I have Quinnipiac's score here from their last meet. They were at 37.350. So I think there was a little bobble, if I remember correctly. I think it might have been in the tumbling heat of the compulsory. So that might have been where they lost a little bit of point, but still pretty close uh, to what they had. both teams had put out there in the past few weeks. And before we get to the scores, you'll see there, so Quinnipiac started at a 10 for Heat 1, 2, and 3, and then Augustana started at a 10, a 9, 3, 5, and a 10. So their totals will be a little bit different when it's out of Augustana's is out of a 29.35, whereas Quinnipiac's is out of a 30.0. 
Also, when you're hearing these scores come out, if you've ever been to a gymnastics meet or a diving competition and you're familiar with those scores, the scores are calculated very similar, similarly to those. So in reference, when you do hear those scores come out, that is kind of what, maybe what you should base it on and kind of relate it to. As we can see, some super fans out there in the stands. <laughs> Little one wearing Quinnipiac's uniform. Love to see it. I love seeing all the alumni coming back too. It's just really amazing. And you can see that these women are dedicated not only to this school, but to this sport. And just coming back to support each, each and every one of these athletes out there uh, every few weeks when we have these home meets, it's great. Absolutely, and a lot of these alumni, they range from either just, just graduated last year or they graduated 2010, 2009. They, so we have a really big showing here tonight. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's taking it way back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always happy to be back here every year, uh, but every year that goes by, I can't believe how many years Before have gone by. It just feels like yesterday for me. We'll get you guys scores the in just a second when we go through each heat. Quinnipiac receives a 9.2. In Acro 6, Augustana receives an 8.15. Quinnipiac receives a 6.1. In Acro 7, Augustana receives an 8.05. Quinnipiac receives a 9.3. Which brings us to our overall meet standings after the compulsory and Acro events. Augustana has earned a 58.3 and Quinnipiac has earned a 62.25. So we'll go into the scores there. So Acro 5, Augustana, Acro 5, 9.2, Quinnipiac 9.7. Acro 6, Augustana 8.15, Quinnipiac 6.1. Augustana and Acro 7, 8.05, Quinnipiac 9.3, which brings those totals to 25.4 for Augustana and 25.1 for Quinnipiac. Our totals so far running after compulsory and acro are Augustana 58.3 and Quinnipiac 62.25. So here we're getting started with the pyramid event. There's going to be three different heats. There's going to be an inversion heat, a synchronized heat, and the open heat. So what we're seeing right now is that inversion heat, and it needs to include an inverted position. I believe we still need to see a three second hold at the top there. So there might be some deductions that go into play for that. But overall, that was really executed quite nicely by Augustana. And same thing for those pyramid heats, as we mentioned for the acro. 45 second time limit for each heat. It can include a varying number of athletes. So you can have a really big monster pyramid out there. You could have a small pyramid with only about five people or so. So it really goes up to that creativity and the strengths of the team, as we mentioned earlier. I think also with each team, you can see them load into that pyramid differently. They can go from the side, they can go from the front, they can even go from the back. And each of these rounds are out of that 10.0 again. So for Augustana, that pyramid there started at a 9.9. .9. And Quinnipiac University, when they go out there, will start out at a 10.0 for their first heat. And while everybody's watching from home, when you are looking, really hone into the stability of the bases, the mid base, and the top. As I said, you'll see these athletes are just constantly warming up their skills, getting ready for their, their next event. So you'll see some warming up their tumbling, which will be coming up shortly after this pyramid event. We were talking earlier about coming back to the meets and seeing everybody, and I think what I always loved to do when I came back was really watch the evolution of these athletes and how all the skills grow and, you know, what the freshman class really brings into a team. And like we said, Augustana has so many freshmen, so they really kind of shape the culture of the team when they go out there and they travel and they practice, and I think that's really incredible to see. Next, with a start value of 10, Quinnipiac. Now Quinnipiac will be taking the mat for their first heat in this pyramid event. And again, as Emma mentioned, we do have a starting value here of a 10. The officials are also looking everything from the beginning, the entry all the way up to 
whatever the athlete may be performing above all the way to that dismount. And again, we're going to be looking at that three-second hold here. As Jordan mentioned, they're a great straddle hold from Mia Rose. So now not only is she hitting this skill on just one level of bases, but there's actually a third level there. And a nice clean dismount. And the officials keep judging until every single person on the mat's feet hit the floor. So one, those mid bases need to come off the bottom bases, and once everybody's feet hit that floor is when the officials will go to work on their whatever deductions they see and then calculate it from there. And as we can see here, after that three-second hold, as Jordan mentioned a little bit or earlier, when she comes down and pikes through, the officials are looking for very similar things as that straddle hold, so making sure her feet are above those hips, which she does with a big smile on her <laughs> face. Really great crowd today here in Hampton, Connecticut for this competition. It's awesome to see how many people are filling those stands from both from both teams. Yeah, and it just continues to get more filled here. I mean, it's just incredible. We have a section I see reserved for the alumni, and there's still some trickling in, so. It's now time for Pyramid Heat 2, the synchronized So pyramid. for Pyramid Heat 2, we will have two groups all about synchronization. It's very different team to team, still judged on that timing, that cleanliness. You'll see them split the mat there, and Augustana will start us off with a start value of 9.9. .9. And again, we're going to be looking at that entry, the actual structure here, and the dismount. So the officials are going to be not, not just looking at the overall picture, but these three things separately as well. As you can see, the bases there are in a bridge with the mids standing on their thighs. So not only is it difficult to hold a bridge, but then to have two structures on top of you, I mean, that just shows you the incredible strength that these athletes have. Nicely done by Augustana. Let's just look back at their starting value for that. I think that was a 9.90. Nine As we can see here on the replay, Good, strong straddles. And their dismount here is quite similar to that compulsory pyramid. So as we mentioned, that compulsory round, kind of the building blocks for each of these rounds. So different basing with the bridge, but exact same dismount as we saw earlier. And again, those officials are going to be looking at the uh, body position of the tops and the body position of how those bases are catching the tops. They want to make sure that they're in a nice extended position. We have some of our former teammates up there with also Billy Mecca. Quinnipiac will now take the mat with a start value of 10.0. Yes, Quinnipiac is going to be doing something, something similar to what we just saw Augustana do. So again, starting in that bridge position. So with that top rotating around that middle base, that's certainly going to increase that difficulty there. And that kind of brought them up to that starting value of a 10. Lots of smiles there. Great timing. Great structures at the top. Also, as we mentioned before, that there can be different ways to get up to the top of the structure. So I think it should also be noted that if you come from the front and you do a certain degree of rotation, that also increases your start value. So if you go from the back and just kind of hop up on there with assistance, obviously, from your thrower, that doesn't get you as many points as if you do start from the front. Like 
one more heat here in the pyramid, which is crazy. And then we're already to halftime. So this last heat is really all about the creativity, I would say. Probably the most creative one. This is the open pyramid heat. So teams can do anything that really suits them best. Yes, there are no specific requirements. So they can go out there and really put anything out on that map. And Augustana does it's have a starting value here of a 10. Three, the open pyramid. Of course, with a start value of 10, Augustana. Again, I always like to see the creativity that each team kind of puts out there for these open heats. A thing to note as well here with the pyramids is they can face forward, sideways. So as we see here, Augustana has decided to go sideways here with this one. Again in that bridge position. Great structure at the top. I'm looking at that middle base too with the way that she's standing, her feet are actually on the kind of more upper part or lower part of the thigh of that uh, bottom base. I mean, that's gotta be an incredibly hard position to hold just with that top on top of her. I mean, it's just, it's awesome to see. Definitely understand why that was a starting value of a 10. <laughs> Great control by that top on that shadow sit and the mid base. Now, Quinnipiac will be taking the mat in just a second for their last heat in this pyramid event. And they will also have a starting value of a 10 here. And this is that open pyramid. I love when they put the camera on the audience because you can see everybody's <laughs> initial reactions when they see themselves on the big screen. <laughs> So this is an alumni meet for the acrobatics and tumbling athletes, but we also do have some alumni from the students, uh, from the athletic trainers, which is also really great to see. So Quinnipiac taking the map. They'll be finishing us off here for this pyramid event. It's a full extension at the top there. And a nice dismount, nice catch, nice landing. Great stability by those two bottom bases there, number 42 and number 30. Those are actually two freshmen, which is really incredible to see their strength really coming for their first year in the sport. And before we get to scores, as we see here on the replay, the strength of these athletes is just absolutely incredible. So. That's a one-man press right there with that top and that mid-base. So that just goes to show how strong each of these athletes are. And you know, the thing that you also learn when coming to your first year of acrobatics and tumbling is not only are you practicing five, six days a week, you're also doing strength and conditioning, lifts, you know, two, three days a week. You're learning Olympic power lifting. So all those things kind of come together for this sport and just make these athletes some of the strongest, you know, we've ever seen. Right, so these athletes are not just learning skills on the mat, but certainly off the mat to improve what they are doing out there, which is just awesome. I think it's also really wonderful to see that you had your mid baser number 46, Skylar. She's not just a base, she's a mid base. You can be a mid base, you could be a top, you could be a tumbler. There's really no one position that you are, and I think it, that also shows to the strength of these athletes and the abilities that they have as they grow through the four years that they are here. And it certainly shows you that this sport is also just giving opportunities from, are giving opportunities to athletes from all different backgrounds, all different skill levels, 
Uh, so it, it is awesome to see that as well, I agree. And a big shout out on Alumni Day to Allie Tallman. She is actually one of our alumni from Quinnipiac who is now doing USA Olympic powerlifting. So it's just incredible to go show that these athletes, even when they're graduated, can still stay involved in some way. And we, before we do hear those scores, we're going to have a 15-minute halftime, and then we're going to see the three final heats of the competition. So you're going to see the toss heat, you're going to see the tumbling heat, and then you're going to see the team event. You have your two assistant coaches up on the screen right now, Cameron Diaz and Melanie Mancini, who are also former alumni of the team. Both graduated in 2020. Also goes to show how you can still be involved after you graduate. As I mentioned, tons of positions, volunteer, part-time, full-time assistant, head coaching jobs. So it's great to say, see that so many people stick around the sport and within their programs that they went through for four years. We have head coach Marianne Powers up on the screen right now. Again, she is going into her 26th season as head coach. And she's got, as we mentioned, just such a great track record of being a coach for Quinnipiac. She's also been coach of the year, uh, nominated or recognized by the NCATA in 2016, and also been coach of the year, uh, recognized by the ECAC in 2017, 2018, and 2019. And I'm sure she's got more of those honors coming up towards her in the future. In the duo pyramid, Augustana receives a 9.45, Quinnipiac receives a 9.85. And in pyramid three, Augustana receives a 9.3, and Quinnipiac receives a 9.85. Which brings us to our overall meet standings after the compulsory acro and pyramid events. Augustana has earned an 84.8, and Quinnipiac has earned a 91.65. Now we are going into halftime. So we'll get those scores for you here. So starting off Pyramid Heat 1, Augustana with a 7.75, Quinnipiac with a 9.7. Synced Pyramid 2, Augustana with a 9.45, Quinnipiac with a 9.85. Heat 3 for Augustana, 9.3. Quinnipiac University with a 9.85. So that brings our meet totals to an 84.8 for Augustana and a 91.65 for Quinnipiac University. As well as information about becoming a coach, student athlete, or official in this exciting sport, visit the NCATA.org today. So we're just going into our halftime here at Quinnipiac University's M&T Bank center here uh, in Hamden, Connecticut. So we'll be back in just a bit, guys. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be happy to see you in the second half of the acrobatics and tumbling meet. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back into M&T Bank Arena. We are about to take on the second half here of the Acrobatics and Tumbling Meet with the Quinnipiac University Bobcats and the Augustana University Vikings. Super excited to be back for the second half. I mean, first half just flew by. It always does. We'll be up here moving forward with uh, the first event. It's going to be one of my favorites. It's going to be our toss event. So uh, Augustana will be taking the match shortly. We're happy to be back. Yes, and the toss event's gonna consist of three different heats. It's gonna be the 450 Salto heat, the synchronized heat, and the open heat. So similar to kind of what we're seeing with the other rounds, um, the second heat is gonna be synchronized, so there are gonna be two groups on the mat. And also, again, each team has their own creativity to kind of put out there what they can and try to get to that top possible score of a 10.0. And again, when we have those two synchronized groups, we're essentially looking at mirror images. And it is difficult, again, to create that when you have two different groups doing the same skill. You want to make sure you're hitting that same height, same timing. So we'll see what these teams are going to put out there. And before we head to the toss event, we just want to give a big alumni impact shout out to Rachel Leahy. So on Thursday of January 5th, the Army West Point men's ice hockey Welcome team was back. actually facing off against Sacred Heart University. And one of our alumni, as I mentioned, Rachel, during the second period of play, one of the players, Eric Cuss, was actually struck in the neck by an inadvertent skate, which resulted in a severe laceration. And she's an athletic trainer at Army, and she rushed to his side, controlled bleeding, prevented a potentially life threatening situation. So Leahy stayed with Huss, continuing critical treatment from the time of the incident until arriving at the medical center where he underwent emergency surgery. And thankfully he has made a full recovery, returned to the ice. So we just wanted to recognize Rachel. You know, we've, Army West Point has recognized her before their home game against Providence, but just wanted to recognize her from our own alumni side as she was an alumni of this program at Quinnipiac University. So for Augustana here, you are going to see for this first heat, number 29, McKenna Trowbridge, number 16, Kate Green, number four, Johanna Dezellum, number 28, Carly Larson, number 15, Ashton Scott, and number 17, Megan Johnson. And in this first heat, Augustana has a starting value of a 9.4 there. As we can see on the replay here, same thing. Officials judging those tops, the bases, nice tight catches, making sure the feet of those bases do not move from the load in all the way until the exit of the whatever toss they may be doing. That was a full toss there from Augustana, which brought them to that 9.4 start value. We've mentioned this a little bit about how important it is for the top to execute this skill at the highest height. So we're looking at making sure that these tops are not jumping right off of the toss, but that they're waiting, 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 executing the skill at the top, and then uh, doing the actual uh, completion there with the catch. And with that creativity too, any team, you can actually go forwards or backwards. You can twist. It's kind of really up to your team's strength. So. As we s we'll see here from both Quinnipiac and Augustana, you know, they'll do forward twisting skills, backward twisting skills, and then that's just judged with each of the officials. And each of the officials are given um, exactly what these teams are going to do ahead of time. So there is a exact thing that is due 24 hours ahead of time from the meet. So all these officials are given the rundown of exactly what the teams are gonna do. And so they'll have a heads up exactly what's going out on that map. So Quinnipiac taking the map right now, and they have a starting value of a 9.90 and their first heat of the toss event. And those athletes out there are going to be number one, Kira McHenry, number 40, Madison Aiello, number 23, Brianna Marks, number 38, Chloe White, number 25, Layla Tracy, and number 24, Farah Chernoff. So as you see there, with Quinnipiac and Augustana. So Augustana did one rotation, whereas Quinnipiac did two. So that's where it brings it from that bump from the 9.4 to the 9.9 .9 start value. And in addition to that rotation, that twist we're talking about, there's also a flip at the same time. As you can see the top there, the keys to really good execution are including the height of the top, the extension of the top right off those bases, again before being caught, and then that catch position. 
And in that catch, you know, the top should maintain that nice hollow body position, nearly flat, but the officials are really looking. If the top's head or toes too much higher than her hips, then that catch may be deducted. Really great heat for both teams. Definitely a great way to start the second half of this meet today, that's Absolutely. for sure. And as Jordan mentioned, each of these heats are out of those 10 possible points. There's three heats for this one, so there'll be 30 possible points. So Augustana will be at a 27.9 start value, and Quinnipiac University will be out of a 29.1 start value. Heat two of this event is the synchronized toss. For the sink heat for Augustana, you are going to Augustana. see number 48, Kylie Curse, number two, Alana Mackhack, number 12, Paige Simon, number five, Reno Roast, number 25, Anika Williams, and that second group is going to be number 29, McKenna Trowbridge, number 16, Kate Green, number four, Johanna Dizellum, number 28, Carly, Lar Carly Larson, number 15, Ashton Scott, and number 17, Megan Johnson. So here we have two groups, up to five athletes. And again, creating those mirror images. Really nicely done. Also, we mentioned this during the pyramid event that they can face these tosses any which way that they please. So they can face them towards the side, they can face them in front to the judges, they can even put them on a little bit of an angle so they're kind of right in the middle of that side and that front toss. So that's really up to the coaches and the team of where they want to place that toss. One thing that's important to notice right here is the height is not just created from the bases, but also that top as well. And as you can see, Coach Kaylin there, she'll take her group in after every single heat, kind of give them a recap talk through everything and then get them ready for that next heat, which I think is great, especially for a first year team, kind of taking them through every single heat, telling them maybe what they did right, everything with jokes, who knows what it's really about, but just keeping that team culture and keeping them collected as a group and going through each of everything that they're doing in each of these heats. Also, as you can see, this meet does move fast, so there is not really any downtime for these athletes. So sometimes in that circle, she might just be calming them down and just getting them ready for the next event that's gonna happen. And in this second half, we have the toss event that we're doing now, then we're gonna head into tumbling, and then that team event. So as Steph mentioned earlier, you'll see athletes warming up the entire second half, probably even more than that first half, just to keep their bodies warm for the big team event at the end, where you can have up to 24 student athletes on the mat. So you might not necessarily be in some of these rounds ahead of time, so you just gotta stay warm and get your body ready for that last event as well. just a moment, Quinnipiac's going to take the mat for this synchronized toss. So you're going to see number one, Kira McHenry, number 40, Madison Aiello, number 23, Brianna Marks, 38, Chloe White, number 25, Layla Tracy, and that second group is going to be number six, Lindsay Rudolph, number 30, Abby Hamilton, number 42, Haley Oswald, number 32, Melanie Reed, number 16, Summer Noel, and your counter is going to be number 24, Farrah Chernoff. And again, Quinnipiac has a starting value here of 9.90. You're going to see these two synchronized groups. So let's talk about those catches a little bit. We're essentially looking to make sure that these tops are caught near the base's shoulder. So if it's too high, deductions. And it's certainly if it's too low of a catch, that will also result in deductions. Also, a very small thing, but is also a deduction, is those tops, when they come in, if their feet are not next to each other and they're crossed, they are, that is also a deduction that the judges look for. So right there, if they come through and the feet across. Also, we have mentioned earlier that we look to not see any steps from the bases, but those front spots that with their backs that are faced to the front, they do, um, well, excuse me, they are allowed one step each. And that it just speaks to going along with safety. So they'll take that step to make sure that they're doing the catch safely. The final heat of this event will be the open toss heat. Up first with a start value of 9.1, Augustana. This is always one of my favorite heats to watch. So this is going to be the open toss. This is our last heat. 
in and the toss event. Those athletes out there is going to be number 48, Kylie Kurse, number 2, Alana Mackhack, number 12, Paige Simon, number 5, Rena Roost, number 25, Anika Williams, and number 17, Megan Johnson. And Augustana has a starting value of 9.10 here. And as we saw there from Augustana, so that was actually a kick layout. So with those kicks, what the officials are really looking for is that 45 degree split or more, but that's the minimum there. And then the judges will go through and officiate that as if the kick was big enough when the kick exactly happened. We'll see it in the recap here. Going for that full height, the kick. So that was a kick and a flip at the same time there, you'll see in that toss. And as Steph mentioned, a lot of creativity in this third heat here. Really go speak the strength of each team, open and they can kind of choose exactly. So with Quinnipiac University's last heat, they will start at a 9.3. And for Quinnipiac University in just a moment, those athletes you're gonna see on the mat are gonna be number six, Lindsay Rudolph. Number 30, Abby Hamilton. Number 42, Haley Oswald. Number 32, Next Melanie Reed. Number 27, Raven Hammond. Quinnipiac. And your counter is going to be number 24, Farrah Chernoff. And as Jordan mentioned, they are facing completely sideways for this one. So you have the choice to go forwards, diagonally, or sideways. Really gorgeous form up in that air by number six. Very clean toss. A lot of energy and smiles from the sideline for that one. And again, that also, that skill that that top had executed at the top was not only flip, but a rotation as well. So before we get to those scores too, as we see here, on this toss, you have the bases, you have a back base, a front base, two on that side. Officials really looking for that rise, nice tight catches, no movement from the bases. And that skill you just saw there is not your typical skill that you do see in the air. It's ex extremely difficult, and that's, that entry was called an Arabian. So they'll do that Arabian, that flip and the twist, and then they'll also spin out of it once they come into the bases. So we've talked a little bit about how the tops need to make sure that they're riding the height of these tosses. The officials are going to be looking at their body position and making sure that they're basically extended. And that also comes from uh, or comes to how they finish this skill as well. So after that skill is executed at the top, the officials are going to be looking again for that hollow body position before the catch. And I think a great thing to note for later on for that team event that I was talking about earlier is that each of these events that these athletes are doing, acros, pyramids, tosses and tumbling, those will all come together to encompass that big routine that I mentioned with all those athletes. So what you'll see them putting out on the mat now and competing is what you're probably going to see in most of these team routines later on for every single program. So it's a great warm up for that big event before they wrap up the entire meet. Also, that top you just saw in that last toss for Quinnipiac, she actually comes from a diving background, which is really remarkable because divers aren't necessarily used to, they do flips and they do twists in the air, obviously off the diving board into a pool, but they're not used to tumbling on a hard mat as such. In gymnastics and trailing, you do have a little bit of spring here, but all those viewers should take note that there are no springs in this floor. So both of these teams are still pretty early in their uh, seasons, but the NCATA will have a national August championship this year, and 25. it will be in West Virginia. A we'll get to the these scores in just a second. Quinnipiac receives a 7.85. In toss three, Augustana receives an 8.4. Quinnipiac receives a 9.2. 
which brings us to our overall meet standings after the compulsory acro pyramid and toss event. Okay, so going Augustana into the scores for the toss event. So for Heat 1, Augustana with an 8.85, Quinnipiac with a 9.3. Augustana Sync Heat with a 7.85, Quinnipiac with a 9.35, Augustana Heat 3 with an 8.4, Quinnipiac with a 9.2, which brings the totals for that specific event, 27.85 for Quinnipiac and 25.1 for Augustana, which brings our meet totals after four events, Augustana 109.9 and Quinnipiac with a 119.5. So we are going to head into the tumbling event, and there are six different heats with the tumbling, which is a little bit different than what we've seen throughout the rest of the meet. So there's going to be one pass, some duo, trio, quad, aerial, the six element, and the open. Augustana will start us off with the duo. So really looking at synchronization here, landings, everything from start to finish. Very clean there by Augustana. I think we lost a little bit of timing through the middle, but caught up on the end, which is super important and great form throughout the entire tumbling pass. And those two athletes you just saw there from Augustana was number four, Johanna Dizellum, and number 12, Paige Simon. Great it's job by both athletes. Definitely great. It's important to notice that these are not spring floors. Some of these athletes are gymnasts coming from uh, a background where they were using spring floors in the past. They certainly do have enough time to learn to adapt to this new floor that they will be tumbling on, but these are essentially two inch mats with no spring. They're just on a basketball floor right now. In each of these passes, again, a lot of creativity. They'll include a variety of skill combinations and the difficulty really comes from all about the degrees of twisting and flipping, as well as how the skills are connected. So there goes in a lot into each officiating all these passes. But the keys, I would say, to great execution when it comes to these scores is synchronization in the first three heats, the continuity of skills, the acceleration of that pass, and then watching the proper body positions and the body position on that landing. So for Kunipiak here, you're going to have number 16, Summer Nine and number six, Lindsay Rudolph. This will have a starting value of a 10 here. We are looking at synchronization there, so there was definitely a little difference in the timing. However, other things that the officials are gonna be looking for are the position of those tumblers' legs. So they want to make sure that the legs are not separated, that they're tumbling that whole pass with their legs basically together. And that pass you just saw there was a round-off whip, Arabian round-off back, handspring one and a half. And as you can see, these athletes will start off the mat and then hop on to kind of line up with each other. A Little bit of timing there, but nice strong landings and finishing all the way at the end together. We're also looking at that controlled step at the end there. And that is something that they are uh, allowed to do and have to select to do that uh, beforehand. And also you guys should know that if you take more than one step, that is also a deduction for each step that you take after that one controlled. And for each of these passes, as we mentioned, start values throughout the whole meet. We'll see a little bit of variation here, especially for the synchronization passes. So as Augustan is up next with this trio, they will be starting at a 9.1. And those athletes you're going to see from Augustana is going to be number 48, Kylie Curse, number 27, Natalie Homerdick, and number 35, Breland Jew. Just another thing that the officials are going to be looking at here is the acceleration that is picked up as these passes go on. So the speed certainly does increase as they are going through the passes, ideally. that landing will definitely result in some deductions just because of how uh, the athlete had stepped out and then landed um, that actual tumbling pass. But overall, again, Augustan is doing a great job, so that was a, a beautiful pass. Yes.
Quinnipiac University will be up next, and their trio pass will be starting at a 9.4. And those athletes you're going to see is number 9, Alyssa Dillon, number 25, Leila Tracy, and number 52, Gabriella Pierce. You'll see how these athletes are going to be starting from Everything different positions on the mat. And that just yeah, is to accommodate their height and how they actually complete their pass. And number 52, Gabriella Pierce. Beautiful timing there. I almost felt like I was watching clones. <laughs> Lots pass. of smiles from the sideline <laughs> yes. on that one. That yeah. pass you just saw was a round off whip back that can't see back handspring one and a half. So essentially when we do talk about the whip back, it's really just a back handspring with no hands. As we can see here on the replay too, everything from start to finish on this one was just great timing out of all three student athletes. Just beautiful right there, that timing. Big smiles there from number 25. So we are moving right along here in the tumbling event. This will be the quad heat, and Augustana will be up taking the mat. And they have a starting value here of an 8.50. And those athletes you're going to see in just a moment is going to be number 32, Maggie Zerlong, number 14, Anne-Marie Gonzalez, number 21, Alex. Excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, but I have Schmedecki. And then number 11, Nora Schumacher. Nicely done, Jordan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have the hard job. <laughs> yes. I needed a minute to think about it there, but I, hopefully I got it right for everybody listening at home. You know what? It showed that you were thinking about it, so you put thought into this. Yes. I like that approach. <laughs> what you'll see, too, with these tumbling passes is timing-wise, it goes from two people to three and then to four, so the synchronization here just gets more difficult as each of the heats go on. I know we were talking about what the judges were looking for before, but also I think a big thing is also bent knees and leg separation. So even in that twist or some, even the opening of the pass when you're going from the round off into the completion, they're really making sure those legs are essentially staying glued together. Yeah, there's so much that they're looking for in, in such a brief period of time and during a skill that's happening so quickly. But again, these officials are trained annually to make sure that they are competent in doing this, uh, doing these meets. Up first, start value of 8.5, Augustana, featuring number 32, Maggie Zerlong, number 14, Anne-Marie Gonzalez, number 21, Alex Maddock. And as you see, the student athletes Nadora will give, give a quick wave for the officials so they know who each athlete is before they go out for this specific heat. Great timing there, controlled landings. That was great out of Augustana. Very nice timing. Again, I feel like I'm watching clones when these are happening. <laughs> that was great. We talked about the form that you need to submit 24 hours before the meet. You also have to submit which exact athletes are gonna be in the round. So as mentioned then, that is why they do give a wave to make sure that everyone who is scheduled to be on there is on the mat. Because it is a deduction actually if someone else goes on the mat when they're not supposed to be. From start to finish there. That was a round off back handspring full twisting layout. Great timing overall. Coach Caitlin's got to be ex really happy with that one. Really, really great form by all four of those athletes as well. So Quinnipiac will be taking the mat in just a second for the quad pass and they will have a starting value of a 9.80. 
Yes, and those four athletes you are going to see is going to be number 24, Farah Chernoff, number 2, Tiffany Ziba, number 23, Brianna Marks, and number 5, Catherine Carter. Next, with a start value of 9.8, Quinnipiac, featuring number 24, Farrah Chernoff, number 2, Tiffany Ziba, number 23, Brianna Marks, and number 5, Catherine Carter. One thing I really want to just mention is the acceleration that occurred in those passes. So each one of those athletes, as they're going through each skill, is getting faster, faster. And that just shows you the strength that they need to have and do have to execute these skills successfully. And as we can see here on the replay, so what these athletes did is a round off, two whips, two back hand springs to a one and a half. Great timing there. You'll see here on the replay, it is slowed down, but it is certainly very fast. <laughs> and I think what we see on the slow-mo is a little bit more than what the officials sometimes see from the front of that mat. I mean, they're pretty much centered to where that bobcat is on the front, so they can see everything side to side. Our cameras are a little off to the side, so great job out of Quinnipiac there. So we're going to head into the single round passes. And for those single round passes, we are going to have the aerial pass, the six element and the open. So we will have one athlete from each team enduring these uh, heats. Augustana will be taking the mat next with a starting value of a 9.60, and this will be the aerial pass. Yes, and that athlete for Augustana is going to be number 16, Kay Green. Something to note with this aerial pass, too. So it's an individual pass, as we mentioned, but it has to have one salto before the final salto in the pass. So there's a couple requirements when it comes to each of these. We'll start with that aerial, then we'll hit that six element, which kind of speaks for itself. Six elements only are allowed. The and then the open pass is where that creativity is and there's no requirements. Up first with a start value of 9.6, Augustana featuring number 16, Key Green. Well, you can see them starting off the mat make sure that they're getting enough strength and energy to execute the skill there throughout their pass. Lots of excitement from the Augustana teammates there. It was just great. And what we'll see here in the replay, just so much raw power. And remember, as Steph mentioned, this floor has no springs. So what the athletes are going out there and doing is just that raw power that they bring. And that pass you just saw, that is a front handspring, front tuck step out, round off back handspring with a one and a half twisting layout. And that front entry is something you don't typically see. You normally see that round off side entry and that front entry is very difficult and really great job by number 16. And what you'll notice with each of these individual passes is athletes can start from the corner, they can start side to side. So every single pass might start in a different area, might start in the same, but what we have here from both Augustana and Quinnipiac is both starting from the corners. And next up, Quinnipiac will be taking the mat in the aerial heat, and they will have a starting value here of a 10. And this athlete's going to be number 24, Farah Chernoff. And as Emma was mentioning before, there are no requirements to how much you can run into the pass. You just have to make sure that the whole tumbling pass fits on the mat. Next, with a start value of 10, Quinnipiac, featuring number 24, Farah Chernoff. Again, looking at that acceleration. Solid landing. Beautiful pass there from number 24, Farah Chernoff. Just so much control, and as we mentioned, that continuity keeps that same acceleration. Also looking at the body positioning of her legs, her whole body, that hollow body position. Great job. Yes. Very nicely executed and essentially making it look flawless. And that's when you can tell that there's just such strength that these athletes have. And that pass you just saw there was a 
Similar entry to what we saw from Angostana. It was a front handspring, front tuck step out, round off with two whips, two back handsprings, and then a one and a half twisting layout. And you can see during these skills, the legs, the knees, they're, they're essentially glued together, and that's really important. Also, the judges are looking for that last element there, that one and a half twisting layout. They're looking for the height of that. So they're really making sure that she is fully extending through her legs and getting as much height as she can out of those two back handsprings that were previous to that. And that nice controlled step, and it's always the step forward. So that's the biggest thing too. There's so many individual deductions, but that nice controlled step forward is exactly what number 24 Farah Chernov showed there, and that's exactly what they're looking for. So for this six element for Augustana, you are going to see number 12, Paige Simon. Now she has a starting value here of a 9.80. Nicely done. Great pass there. Really great. And Paige just did a wonderful job with that pass. Really clean, really clean, straight legs, and they were both together. We're also looking again at the height of where these skills are executed. And that pass was a round off with two whips, two back handsprings, and that one and a half twisting back layout. Just flying through here, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, we just breeze through this tumbling heat. Um, excuse me, the tumbling event. So Quinnipiac will be taking the mat at, for their six element pass. And Quinnipiac will have a starting value here of another 10. And that athlete for Quinnipiac is going to be number 16, Summer Noel. And we'll notice what I was talking about earlier. This athlete will actually be going from side to side here, different from that corner. So just an important thing to know as we head into this next heat for Quinnipiac. And also, if you're watching, all these single athletes also do still have to wait to the judges, even though they are doing it individually. I really want to emphasize, too, like we mentioned before, that there are no springs in this floor. So these athletes are really making these tumbling passes out of their own strength and power that they're generating either from the run or from the skills that are coming before. And that is really remarkable, and it's really incredible to see. Yeah, I think we can all remember how this mat is not very forgiving. <laughs> no, it is not. With all these heats as well within tumbling, they're also out of that 10.0. So there are six heats in this one. So quite a big chunk of the score comes from the tumbling event. There are 60 points possible. First three heats were all those timing with the athletes, synchronization, and then these three kind of more open individual passes. So super important part of the meet as we head into the, even the bigger chunk of the whole meet, which is the team event, and that will be out of 110 points, but this 60-point chunk is super important. Yeah, I mean, it is it is double the score that you would get for the toss, the pyramid, or the acro, so just something to make note of. Another flawless pass, and that was the starting value, as we mentioned earlier, of a 10. And that pass we just saw from Summer was a round off whip right into an Arabian, round off back handspring, one and a half twisting layout. And it's really awesome to see that whip back right into that Arabian because essentially you're connecting two skills without ever putting your hands on the ground. Good continuity there, definitely something the officials are looking for. This will be our last heat in the tumbling event, and this is the open pass. Again, this will involve one athlete from each team. And definitely a lot of creativity here on this one. Definitely speaks to the strength of whatever athlete they're putting out there, able to kind of pick and choose. And Augustana, for their individual, will be starting at a 9.4. And that athlete is going to be number 29, McKenna Trowbridge.
she will also be starting from the side of the mat, just as we saw Quinnipiac do. This will be our last heat before we enter into the team event. There's a lot to cover for the team event. We will try to talk you guys through it. Uh, but essentially, just picture everything you've just saw in a two minute, 45 second routine. It's quite amazing. Yeah, so keep your eyes peeled because that goes very quickly and there's a lot of things going around, going on all around the map. Great acceleration. Again, we'll see some deductions there from that landing. But again, it's we're looking at the overall pass as well. And she was executing it quite beautifully in the beginning with, the, again, the acceleration of that speed, high height in those skills, pointed toes. So although there will be some deductions likely for that landing, it's still, there's other things that they're looking at as well. In this pass you're seeing here's a round off whip with two back handsprings to the one and a half twisting back layout. And what we're looking at there is probably that the last part of that uh, twisting layout was not completed fully. Quinnipiac University will round out the tumbling event with a start value of 10.0 here in this open pass, and then we'll get all those scores to you before the one and only team event that we keep talking about. Yes, and this athlete you're going to see here for Quinnipiac is going to be number five, Katherine Carter. Now, I believe she is one of the first years, is that correct? Yes. She's a first year, and she comes from predominantly cheerleading background. So she definitely has some quite exciting years ahead of her. She's only a first year, and you could tell already has tremendous skills. And as we mentioned, each of these teams has anywhere from six to eight meets. So I think it's a great opportunity to be able to give maybe some of these first years the opportunity to go out there and compete, see how they score, see how they do under that game day pressure. So it's just so great that they're able to put a first year out there. And that really also shows the depth that Coach Power is building within her team. Beautifully done. Lots of smiles there from number five, Katherine Carter. Yes, the whole team is super pumped about that. We'll get the replay up here. One thing to note is how she's completing this and essentially making it look effortless. Yes, and this pass you're seeing is a round off with three whip backs in a row to two back handsprings and a one and a half twisting salto. Great body position through each one of those skills. As you can see, great leg squeeze there and all the whips and the back handsprings, which is amazing to see even from the corner. You know, sometimes, as I mentioned, those camera angles, but just a very impressive job for her debut of her own open pass. Yes, and I think for each meet, it's important to note that you could switch out these athletes however you choose to do so. So for her, she didn't necessarily compete the last meet, but this meet, Coach Powers did put her in, and I think she did a fantastic job. And going a little bit more into depth of that, so 24 athletes will compete in that team event, which we're going to bring up next, but there's actually 28 who dress. So not everyone necessarily in that team event is the only people dressing for the meet. So you have four other people. They may be specialty athletes. They may be there, say anything might happen with an injury-wise or anything like that. So there's 28 that do dress. And then there's rosters that kind of range from there might just be those 24 athletes. There might be 18. That's the minimum you need in that team event. But you can have up to 45 student athletes. So Quinnipiac, they've been around a long time. They're on the bigger side for a roster with 44 student athletes. So kind of ranges there, but just super important to note that, as Jordan mentioned, it's very interchangeable of who's going to be, might be competing and starting versus who's in team event and things like that. Now, Quinnipiac was selected as number four in the preseason uh, coaches poll. So just something to make note of. Again, they've been part of this uh, organization, the NCATA, since going back to 2009-2010 season. Uh, Augustana new to the NCATA, but 
as you can see, doing a wonderful job, just really putting great energy and great skills out there today. So within this team event, like we said, you're going to see everything that you just watched previously all into two minutes and 45 seconds. So you're going to see 30 acro elements. You're going to see five tosses, four pyramids. Then they need to do each standing and running tumbling. So you're going to have 21 of those. And also some of those passes also need to be synchronized. So you need to have a few athletes going at the same time and the same exact skill. And then at the end, there is going to be a little bit of a dance. And that dance does count. <laughs> yes, it does. You need to see the biggest the smiles come from that dance. Augustana has received an 8.1. Quinnipiac receives a 9.5. You'll get those scores too in just a few moments. In the trio tumbling pass, Augustana has received a 7.25. Quinnipiac receives a 9.0. In the quad tumbling pass, Augustana has received an 8.15. Quinnipiac receives a 9.25. In the aerial tumbling pass, Augustana has received a 9.15. Quinnipiac receives a 9.825. In the six element tumbling pass, Augustana has received a 9.4. Quinnipiac has received a 9.775. And in the opening tumbling pass, Augustana has received a 7.75. Quinnipiac received a 9.675. Which brings us to our overall meet standings after the compulsory. So April heading into those scores before we head into this team event August here. So tumbling event for the duo tumbling, Augustana with a 8.1, Quinnipiac with a 9.5. Augustana's trio with a 7.25, Quinnipiac with a 9.0. Augustana's quad event, 8.15, Quinnipiac 9.25. Aerial pass for Augustana, 9.15, Quinnipiac with a 9.825. Six element for Augustana, 9.4, Quinnipiac 9.775. And then that open last heat for Augustana is a 7.75, and Quinnipiac with a 9.675 which brings the totals for that specific event a 49.8 for Augustana and a 57.025 for Quinnipiac University, which brings our totals to 159.7 for Augustana and a 176.525 for Quinnipiac as we head into Augustana taking the mat and their start value for this team event is a 101.09, which as I mentioned can be all those elements, as we mentioned earlier, acro, pyramids, toss, tumbling, and that dance all contributes to that start value. So there's certainly some creativity that does go into this. But these coaches need to know the score sheet here because there are certain things that are required. So we have two pyramids here. Great three second hold. Nice tight catches there. You'll see the creativity here and how they utilize the mat where these Acro, uh, where the acro is actually lined up on the mat, where the tumbling passes take off and start. And you might be thinking, how on earth are these officials judging this? How are they watching everything? They are assigned to about three mats each. And following the pass, they are going to follow the passes that originate in their designated three mats. Yes, so you saw those three tosses in those three panels, so only one judge judges all of those. Beautiful timing there. Again, we're looking at those mirror images. We keep saying it, but Augustana doing a great job there. A little bit of timing there on the right. Looks like we're getting some more acro skills here. Great positions by all those props on the map. We have some running tumbling passes here. Everything 
that we've talked about so far throughout the meet, the officials are looking for. They're looking at body position. They're looking at solid landing. They're looking at that acceleration in those passes. So there's so much that is involved in this actual part of the meet. Cut into two more pyramids in the back. Again, those solid holds there. Good catches on the landing there. And here's where all these athletes are taking a nice deep breath. Not, not only are they finishing with a dance, but it looks like there's going to be a toss here as well. We see that kick layout. Great routine there by Augustana. Absolutely. I thought the whole routine was really put together great, and I thought all those athletes did such an amazing job. Yeah, so just to kind of recap, Augustana did have a starting uh, value for their team routine, uh, or team event, excuse me, of 101.09. Now, in their last actual meet, they did score a 92. 0 .090, which is really, really a good high scoring, um, high score for the actual event there. I think something to also notice, as we talked about a little bit in the routine, is actually that, so these officials, to ensure that they can kind of clearly see everything, they actually do a walkthrough with the routine during warm up So this just allows the officials to confirm the sight lines, see everything exactly what they're doing. The teams don't have to perform it in warm ups but just go through the counts, go through the entire routine, so super important there. Now to give the officials some time, we do have the Quinnipiac dance team up here. You guys may not see this, but Coach Powers is watching these girls. She gives them such support. So she's not only supporting, obviously, her own team, but she is here for all the other teams out there, part Quinnipiac. And the reason this team comes in to perform during these team routines, I mean, it takes a lot to judge each of these team routines. I would say about five minutes or so in between each one to judge all of those different things. So it's great that we can see the Quinnipiac dance team be able to perform here and support all the other local teams. Yeah, it's great to have them and also just to see them supporting the sport of acrobatics and tumbling. Also going back to those officials, all these officials all have a background. Their backgrounds can vary in what they used to judge and officiate previously. So they can come from a gymnastics background, a cheerleading, or they can just be trained by the NCATA. Fans, let's hear a round of applause for the Quinnipiac Dance Team. Great job there by the Quinnipiac Dance Team. Before we head into Quinnipiac's team event, well, they'll be starting at a 106.85 for their team event. And we mentioned earlier that when you're going into a period pyramid or you're going into an acro skill, it can vary where you enter and how you exit. And that is the same thing here in the team event, that those rules also apply. And that's where that start value you see will go up, is once you increase the difficulty of those skills. Coach Power is getting the team ready. So again, things that we're looking at for the team event, we're looking at the acro, we're looking at pyramids, tosses, and in addition to that, we're looking at both running and standing tumbling. So again, I think we've, we're saying it over and over, but there's so much that goes into this part of the uh, meets today. And of course, the dance too. I can't forget about that. It really puts the true meaning into like a grand finale. This is the grand finale. Everything you just watch is all put in onto this mat. That's a perfect way to put it. I always think in my head like the compulsory is kind of like your warm up, you know, your your bread and butter skills, your basic skills, and we're just like growing and growing and growing throughout these meets. So this is, as you said, the big finale. Yes. 106.85 start value. Please welcome your Quinnipiac University Bobcats. And here we go. The Bobcats taking the mat. Also, each team has their own creative ability to pick whatever music that they want. I love that because you might not think it's important, but the music is such a motivator. Absolutely. And, and the music does change every year. Yes, it does. Some themes. I'm sure you can hear it in the background. <laughs> yes. So you'll see we did start off with some standing tumbling there, moved into some running tumbling, and going right into some acro. 
so you're going to see a multiple uh, different acro elements here. Great control by those by those athletes doing that hand in hand. Now, why walk to your next position when you can have a running tumbling pass? Again, looking at that acceleration and that pass, nicely done. Heading from standing tumbling into some tosses, as we mentioned, three synchronized ones. Nice, clean, good height on those, nice tight touches. Great timing, too, all around here. I always like seeing how they choose to utilize the mat. Again, this goes to the creativity of the coaches out there. Season two synchronized tosses. Looks like we'll be moving into some acro. We've got some pyramids, and as we mentioned, not all of them have to be synchronized, so we see a little bit of variety. Really great work by all these athletes. Nice, strong pyramids to end there. Some more running tumbling. going on in two minutes and 45 seconds. Finishing off with that dance and you do have some acro on the side there. Great work Welcome by the Bobcats. University Bobcats. Great job by both teams out there today. Again, we have the Augustana Vikings and the Quinnipiac Bobcats. Well, hopefully we're getting those scores out to you guys in just a second. You might be thinking, what's next for Quinnipiac Bobcats acrobatics and tumbling team this season? So they will have their next meet at, uh, let's see, Presbyterian College on March 18th and then Baylor on March 25th. They will not be home again till April 1st and that will be against Frostburg State University and then their last meet of the regular season on April 14th, again, a home meet for, with uh, Oldwell University. And as we mentioned for Augustina, this is actually their third meet, and they have four more to go after this. So they'll be at Caldwell University. They're on a little spring break trip here, so that's one thing kind of behind the scenes. If you're coming all the way from South Dakota, they're going two yes. places, one trip, kind of doing interchanging. So they'll be at Caldwell in New Jersey, then at Concordia University, and then they'll wrap up their season with Trine in Adrian College. So what's interesting is that they're actually going to have a tri meet to end their season. So it's not necessarily only just two teams. It sometimes is three. And for a program there, like, we're super excited there for the rest of the screen. The replay for the Quinnipiac Bobcats team event. For the fans, we have Ava Great Buswell, synchronization on those two passes Kate in the Palmer, front. Anila Morris, and Kaden Randall. Great height on those tosses. We're going to have two rounds. And those tosses you saw was a full twisting back there. Their hands in for 20 seconds. One of the things that differs during the team event is they don't necessarily have that time in between to almost mentally prepare. They just have to be ready, and it's so important that these athletes are aware of that, and you can tell that they certainly are prepared. They're going from skill to skill flawlessly. Yes, and also the endurance of these athletes is remarkable. I mean, you are trying to fit a countless number of skills into 2 minutes and 45 seconds back to back. And as we see that dance, it does have to be two eight counts, actually. So you got to make sure you do those two eight counts or you're not going to get those 10 points. So before we head into the scores for those team events, we'll talk a little bit about the national championship. Steph mentioned this earlier, but the national championship is the top eight teams from the regular season who compete for the team title. 
So they're seated by a, a championship committee, and then there's an event finals, which feature five groups or individuals in each heat. And this season will actually be happening down at West Liberty University in West Virginia. So we're super excited, and that will happen the last weekend in April. Also, Emma, I don't know if you mentioned this, there is also, with the meet you see like this at Nationals, they also do have an, an individual event that each athlete or group of athletes needs to qualify for, and that does happen in that opening meet. So that just also goes to show how important each meet that you do is. So. So we've talked about the national championship. We do hope in the future to see an NCAA championship status. In order to reach that, we do need 40 teams to be competing. Uh, we certainly have, I think, more than 40 teams that are part of the NCATA with acrobatics and fumbling teams. However, not necessarily all of them are competing at this point in time. But getting closer and closer every year, that's for sure. Okay, so all those teams vary, whether they're Division One, Division Two, or Division Three. And right now, the uh, different divisions are competing against each other. Uh, Quinnipiac being a Division I college, or university, excuse Watching me. the t-shirt toss here, I think, before we wrap up this meet. Yes. And if anybody was tuning in was just watching, they had a bunch of the alumni come back out into the mat and see if they still have those skills honed in. A little bit of a handstand contest, spectators versus alumni. I didn't realize the live stream would save me from that today. <laughs> I was just about to say, thank God I am sitting right here. <laughs> Yeah, happy to be back here with you guys. It's it's always an honor to be back here at, at the at our school, being alumni of the team, but uh, also being able to work with athletes that were part of different years. It's just really it's great. Um, you know, Marianne is so proud. I think of all of her athletes, but uh, it, it really is great how she does unite us all from all different areas, all different classes. So. Again, just happy to be here, and thank you. And be sure to stay tuned. She'll be for a post-game interview when we wrap up this meet. So, her yes. favorite part. Yes. <laughs> we always look forward to talking to her afterwards, picking her brain about how things went, and seeing what the team is going to be doing to move forward in their season and what they're going to do to continue their success. And I think the biggest thing to notice, too, is that they, these teams, depending on the program and kind of the strength of schedule, they might go back to back to back. As I mentioned, Augustana, they're headed to New Jersey and they're competing in only four days. So the recovery time, everything within that realm is just super important. So for Quinnipiac, I mean, their first meet was about two and a half weeks ago and now we're here later, whereas a lot of teams can go back to back. So it's super important to recover, kind of bounce back and see what you got to improve for your next meet. Absolutely, and I think everybody's really just continuing to put their best effort out there just to get to the national championship. So not only are they improving every meet, they're changing things around and seeing which works better and technically works with the groups on the team or you have Augustana see what they're going to put out for the next, for on New Jersey, it might not actually be the same exact thing as what they did here today. Certainly, and that goes to show you how these teams are growing in their own season. I did notice that some of our starting values for Quinnipiac were a little different than what they had been, uh, you know, two weeks ago when we were here. So, uh, again, that just shows to show you how things are growing, things are expanding, and things are continuing to move forward. Sometimes the start value actually may go down a little bit if the coaches realize, you know what, we didn't execute that perfectly, we got to make some adjustments, and that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, so that just goes to show you how important it is as well for these coaches to really know the score sheet. And each meet is just so important. I think, I mean, that national championship committee, they take into account home meets, they take into account away meets, kind of where you're going and how you're scoring in each of those things. And then as Jordan mentioned, those event finals, that is all based on your season scores. So if you go out there and you knock Acro 5 out of the park and you do great in all six or seven of your meets, you have a very high chance of making it into that event finals. And the biggest adjustment, which is different for us too, this year event finals is actually on a separate day from the national championship. So they'll do their semis, their quarters, their national championship, and then event finals will actually be the next morning. So I think wow. that's a great adjustment, but in a positive way, I mean, from what we were a part of. So that will be super important for those athletes to get that recovery time, as we mentioned. Absolutely. And competing... You know, if you are a team that makes it all the way to the national championship, you're competing essentially three days in a row, mm -hmm. and now a fourth day in a row, which is extremely hard on these athletes. Bam, and that also goes to show, like we said, that strength TV. and that mental they toughness of all these athletes that are on the mat. The it's a really team. important thing to notice. We're gonna get those scores here in just a second. Quinnipiac receives a 90 92.45. That makes the final score of today's meet. 
at Augustana with a 251.140 and Quinnipiac with a 268.975. So those team event scores for Augustana received a 91.44 and Quinnipiac received a 92.45 which brings the meet totals for today's event a 251.14 for Augustana and a 268.975 for Quinnipiac University. So that brings Quinnipiac to 2-0 and oh on the season and Augustana a 1-2 and two record so far. Great performance today by both teams. Really great job. I will just recognize Quinnipiac, their last meet, again, this is the second meet of their season. Their first meet, their season opener, they did have a total score of 265.390. So today you can see that they've already made some growth in their season with a total score of 268.975. So in just a few, four, a few short minutes, hopefully we're going to be able to talk with Coach Powers and see how she thought today's event went and what they think that they're going to do for the rest of the season coming up. We're happy to talk with Coach Powers in just a second. We'll get her out here and again pick her brain about how things went and what they're going to be doing moving forward to continue obtaining obtain success in the season. And again, Quinnipiac will be taking the going on the road for their next meet, which will be on March 18th, and that's against Presbyterian College. And then Baylor, who has had also some great success in the past, they will be against them on March 25th, again on the road. So we won't see you guys home until April 1st. And for everybody at home, if you're interested in participating in acrobatics and tumbling, please go to the NCATA website, get some more information, reach out to coaches, We're just trying to coach down, uh, track down our coach here, Coach Powers. We want to chat with her, but she is, uh, of course, busy with all the alumni, busy with talking to Augustana as well, and congratulating them on their success so far as well. Yes. And I really want to emphasize that Augustana, this is their first year competing. It is really remarkable to see how well Coach um, Kaylin has put together her team and just continues to grow every single day. And thank you guys for joining us today and also just supporting this sport, which we continue to see grow and grow and grow. It's been 14 years. I can't believe it's been 14 years since we, you know, we have been you know, seeing this grow yes. and grow. So 2009 was when the NCATA started to form, grow together. Coaches came together and started to realize that they saw something. They saw a vision yes. to give opportunities to women out there as athletes. Yes. So here we have Coach Powers. I'm going to hand over the mic to her. We're on some wheelie chairs over here. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. We are with head coach Marion Powers of Quinnipiac University. Mayor, so, you know, we improved three points from last meet, but what do you think were some of the positives that came out of this? Um, I think one of the positives was was we had a rough acro round that um, it took us down to three points lower than we were the first meet, and they had to recover those points, and that's what I was talking to them over on the side about. Let's let's not have the uh, let's not spiral downwards. Um, I could see that there was a purveyance of a little bit of um, not forgiving themselves for the mistake. You know, I mean, in our sport, we teach people they have to be perfect. I don't know if that's such a great idea, but. Um, you know, they came around and they and they brought that back up, so that was great. And as we mentioned, our first year team for Augustana, I think it's amazing they're out here, they're gonna take on Caldwell next. Kind of a swing trip for them, but you know, what does it mean to have Kaylin Cowan bring that team and perform? They've been against Oregon, they've been against Concordia, now you guys, so just, what's the impact of that? I just went over and, and talked to them, and I said, you know, I think what was really fun about watching you guys is that all these new first year programs that are starting, and we have the coaches that already did the sport come in with a really clear understanding of the way things are done it was so um, readily readily seen they did they were fantastic I told them they were probably one of the best first year programs I've ever seen come out mm -hmm. they did a great job and as we mentioned alumni day we're so happy to be back 30 yes. plus people in the stands I mean yep. you've created just an amazing program here so what have the alumni impacted you they continue to impact me you're one of them you're one of them I mean what do I say I mean 
it's one thing to you know play a division one sport and to have that impact when you're on the mat um, while you're competing and you're getting your academics in order it's another thing to come out graduate get a great job be we have so many great people that have come through this program holding really high high profile jobs and just doing good things um, and so we're pretty proud of that you know pretty proud of that but we're excited to be back. We're so yes, grateful we that to have us at the live stream. I know we got out of the handstand <laughs> contest. I can't tell yes. you how excited we were about that. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yes. Presbyterian next, and then Baylor, you're away for two, then home for the last two. So what do you think this team's going to have to do to prepare for those next couple meets, especially on the road? You know, in team routine, they got the big things back, but they let go of the little things, and that's what I talked to them about. I, I can't let them walk away thinking that, that you know, some of the things that happened near the end, we have, you know, two extra trying to recover a couple of acro things that are at the front of the mat we had a hand in hand over here and a 180 up over there and both came down and not okay um, and so that's a coaching error we are going to make sure that we clean that up and uh, we get them a little bit more prepared to finish just got to go in for the finish so um, I thought they looked great out there today they brought a lot of energy mm -hmm. um, and I was really proud of the turnaround from the first half scores so Thank you so much, You're Mayor. Welcome. Good luck with everything the rest of the season. See you guys upstairs, right? See you yes, upstairs at the right. alumni event. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Are we good? Maybe just like sign off and say thanks for So as we look here, here are the final scores as we wrap up today's meet. Quinnipiac with a 268.975 and Augustana with a 251.140. We are so excited to have you guys back. The Quinnipiac Bobcats will be on the road against Presbyterian and Baylor, and then they will be back here at M&T Bank Arena on April 1st. So we will see you then. Have a wonderful afternoon. Yes, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you.